Good morning. Good to be with you this day. I'm guessing we have many more online today because we have very few here today. So uh, hopefully everybody's safe and uh, enjoying a beautiful morning. It actually was uh, quite a drive in. I enjoyed it. Uh, um, these beautiful snowy mornings that God gives to us this day. Good to be with you. Say a good morning to those around if you would please. <coughs> Again, those who are with us online, good to be with you as we gather together this day as well. Now into the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. We're rolling right along here as we embark upon the month of February. Order of service is printed out before us. We'll follow it as it leads us this day. We begin with our opening hymn here. I'm turn my page. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. You'll notice we sing verses 1, 3, 4, and 7. Lord's blessings as we worship this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are pure. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, 
God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. We pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We continue as we sing responsibly the intro for today, today from Psalm 32. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord.
abide with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we know, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all our dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the readings appointed for this day. <clears throat> the Old Testament reading for this, the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet, shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence, and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom all are all things, and from whom we exist. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom we all are all things, and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge this weak person is destroyed, this brother for whom Christ died. Thus, sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. Please, standing as, please stand with me as we continue by singing the Alleluia and verse.
They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere, throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated as we continue by singing together the hymn of the day. The text that serves as the basis for this morning's meditation comes to us. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. So for the text for us this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy One of God, dear friends, in his name. Many years ago, there was, I'll call it a game show, and it was called This Is Your Life. They would surprise a celebrity, at least that's what we were led to believe, doing some reading on that every once in a while, the celebrity knew they were going to be brought on this show, but they would bring in a celebrity, and then they'd have to try and guess, this is your life, and people who were connected with them, maybe in high school, or maybe their first job, or maybe someplace that wasn't as popular, of course, 
as their popularity had grown. In a sense, it was kind of a guess who. I want to lay before you today in our text kind of the opposite of that. As we see evil spirits, and as we see this one coming onto the scene that cleanses this man of these evil spirits, we know who they are. And as we dive into our text for us today, we look and we learn a little bit about these evil spirits and where they come from, and then, of course, our champion. Their life, their purpose, opposite ends of the spectrum, indeed. First, we, we look at these evil spirits and who they work for. Satan himself. What do we know? Well, Scripture teaches us that Satan wanted to be equal with God himself. And he rebelled because, of course, he wasn't. In this bid to replace God, he was placed under eternal judgment, cast out of heaven. And as Revelation teaches us, along with a third of the stars in the sky. Because of his judgment, he turned his rebellion against God towards creation. We know where it began, in a garden, a long time ago. The devil coming to Adam and Eve and putting that first question in their minds. Did God really say and from that day forward, we have been questioning and questioning and wondering, what does it mean? How do we follow? Of course, we know Adam and Eve took that question, thought about it, and realized that they of themselves could decide that which was right and proper. And of course, as we know, they made a choice that was neither right nor nor proper, in disobeying God and eating that forbidden fruit in the center of the garden. Because of that, we know sin entered into them, their disobedience, into their DNA, so to speak, and has been carried on from generation to generation ever since. Because of that, we are all infected with sin. In the church, we call it original sin. It has its origin in Adam and Eve, and it's a part of us when we're conceived. We don't get born with a clean slate. We aren't born with a perfect body or mind, and then as we start to grow, we make mistakes along the way, and then that's when sin enters into our heart. That's why we're, we teach the power of God in baptism. Because we are born in sin. We need to be cleansed of that sin as soon as possible. And God has given us that gift to do just that. Before we get more into that, we continue to look at the life. Who is this one we call Satan? He's incredibly powerful. He has a lot of power over mankind and over our world. He knows, this is an important point, he knows our only hope for survival in terms of eternity lies in another man. He knows we only have one hope for survival for our salvation. We know who that is, it's Jesus, of course. So he pokes, and he prods, and he gets us to question and to think that maybe God isn't all he says he is, or following him isn't important, or we can just follow him when we want to, with no reservations or no costs. His only purpose, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, 
is to tear us away from the love of God that we have in this champion, Jesus. And he'll do whatever it takes. He knows he has lost the battle. He knows he has lost the war. So his only hope is this. I want to take as many of God's precious creation, his most precious, you and me, mankind, I want to take as many of them with me to destruction, to separation from God. That's the life, if I want to use the context of that game show, of the devil. He's seeking to remove us from our God. And like I said, he will do anything to do just that. I think if we take a few minutes now or back home, we realize, and we can think of many times, where we've done things we shouldn't have done, we've made decisions, or others have placed things upon us that have caused us grief, and we can see it stems from the one who does not wish us good tidings, but wishes us to end with him, separated from God for all eternity. He gives us a false hope that somehow in trusting in him, having the material things of the world, or having our priorities centered in ourselves, will win the day. And he is extremely good at convincing us that God does not need to be our priority, our first priority. We can get to him later. That's just one of many things he's willing to put in our minds. Satan wants us to believe that there's no hope, really. All you have to do is look in the mirror. Look how miserable you are. Look how miserable our world is. Look at all the things you do wrong. You're not worthy of this God. Like I said, he will do whatever it takes to get us to stop thinking that God is a God of love and that he wishes to save us that he wishes for us to be with him forever and all eternity. Again, his only hope is tearing us away from our beloved Heavenly Father. That's the life of that one. And then we come to the life of the one who comes into the scene in our text for today, Jesus the Christ. Who is he? We know the Prince of Heaven. Son of God and Son of Man. His purpose. To overthrow Satan in all of his ways. To show the world to you and to me. There is hope. And there is comfort. And there is salvation in him. To not trust those lures that the devil throws at us. And that what he says will be. His purpose, of course, went to the cross. Where he said those three beautiful words that we've heard countless times. It is finished. He confronted Satan. He exposed Satan. And he now reigns victorious over Satan, the world, our sinful nature. Because of who he is and what he has done. As I said before, he is our champion. Our only hope for salvation. And we have it. Because he is our deliverer. He has defeated Satan himself and all his messengers. That's where we lead into our text for today. These messengers battling in a man's body. And yet, what do they say? I know who you are, Jesus of Nazareth. So many people don't know who Jesus is. They don't know. The evil spirits do. 
those that are out and amongst the world to wreck humanity, wreck our faith, to tear us from God our Heavenly Father and the love that we have in Jesus Christ, they know. They know. They know he's the victor. They know he reigns supreme. They know that their only consolation is tearing us up, his most precious of all creation. They want to tear this man apart. And they have in some respect. Do they really care about this man? Of course not. They just want to tear him away from Jesus. They want others to think that he has a power greater than they, than they do, than Satan does. Jesus comes on the scene and hearing those words, I know who you are, the Holy One of God, and says... Be silent. Be silent, you evil spirits. You have no power over me. You can wreak a lot of havoc in this world. You can wreak a lot of havoc inside an individual's body. And we see that all over the place. But you cannot overcome me and the power that I bring. Come out. And they do. Christ alone sets this man free from these evil spirits. The same Christ sets us free from all that would be evil within us. Because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In this epiphany season, he is the light, the true light of the world that has come so that we might have peace. Comfort it is to know that we in faith know who he is as well. Because we know him differently. We know him as our Savior who has redeemed us through his own blood. The evil spirits, they're done. They have no hope. We do. Because our hope lies in the one who has set us free from sin and death and the power of the devil himself. Nothing, Paul writes in Romans 8, can separate us from his love gifted to us. In our lives, we deal with a lot of stuff. It's important for us to fess up to God. Those things that entangle us, again, words that, that Paul would use. It's to try to suppress us in our faith and our love for one another. We see it all around us. All the division and the strife and the questioning and the fear. The devil's playing on that as much as he can, hoping that it'll only grow in us. And yet Jesus, once again this day, says, fear not. Be not dismayed. Even in the midst of the mess, I'm there. I am in that mess with you, reminding you of who I am, hoping that you will continue to cling to what I have brought. Perfect peace. Holy salvation. And the life that is to come. One day, an eternal life when we leave this place, we can look Satan right in the eye and say, you don't win. You can't win. Yeah, sometimes I falter and I fail. Sometimes it looks like you're winning, but my God reigns supreme. He's the rock. You're the sinking sand. You don't last. He will. I pray as we leave this day, we remember what we have in Jesus, who knows us, by the way, as our good shepherd, John chapter 10. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. That's powerful, folks, as we hear from Jesus himself. Yesterday, we used the words from John chapter 14 again where Jesus talking to the disciples, ultimately leading to, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
that first verse starts with this. Trust in God, trust also in me. Brothers and sisters, indeed, we can trust in him. What a joy it is to know him. What a joy it is, even in our stained body, that we're fully known by him. I pray we live in that joy and confidence, knowing who Christ is, what he has done, the victory we have. I know who you are, Jesus, and it's a good thing. May we be blessed as we live in that. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God, who surpasses all our human understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to stand with me as we continue professing our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, who God is not made, being in the one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under our trial. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures. Sits at the right hand of the Father, and then he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is called by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Heavenly Father, send out messengers and missionaries to every corner of the earth, that people from every tribe, nation, and language would hear the saving message of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help your church throughout the whole world to bear one another's burdens. Humble those who need humbling, and strengthen those who need to ask for help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, walk with all those who are grieving in the shadow of death. Especially we ask your blessings this day upon the family of Robert Radke, the family of Joan Weber, the family of Bob Troya, the family of Ron Balwig, and most recently the family of Carol Heinrichs. We ask you to bring peace and comfort to these families. Remind them of the, <clears throat> of the hope that you have given to them and to us, that we might rejoice in your resurrection, knowing that you have washed us clean because of the forgiveness won for us in Jesus. Be with these, your servants, that they may rely upon you all the more. Comfort them with the hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we rejoice in many things in this world. Thank you for providing so many blessings and reasons for us to rejoice. Help us not to lose sight of our main reason for rejoicing. We are your children. And our names are written in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, look with favor upon all children, especially those who are orphans and in foster care. Lead them all to families that will love them and care for them as you love and care for all your children. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, look with favor upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering this day. 
Continue to be with Carl and Eunice, Rich and Nancy, Gerald and Lois, Caleb. These your servants and all those we name before you in our hearts at this time. The Lord have mercy upon them, strengthen and heal them according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, extend your peace upon the whole earth, that the nations and kingdoms of the world stop their warring madness and live together under you in peace and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please remain standing as we continue in preparation for the sacrament this day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all of creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, laid on him our sin giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient temple, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifested the fullness of your glory in human flesh. We give you thanks that in his most holy supper, you reveal your glory to us. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night which was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave it thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also took the cup after supper, and when he gave it thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
Now may this precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and the life everlasting. Peace be with you. Please stand as we continue by singing together the new the menace.
again to all of you. Good to be with you. Those who made it out this morning and, and those worshiping with us online today, and, and indeed a, a blessed morning to you all. A couple of announcements for us this day. We thank the Troy family um, for uh, leaving some of the flowers from yesterday's funeral service to help adorn our altar um, this day. Um, did have the funeral yesterday and uh, was, a, was a blessed day as we celebrated um, the life of Bob Troya. Um, a couple other announcements in here as well. Um, you'll notice for those of you here, we, uh, we have Easter flower forms. We're, we're not quite to Ash Wednesday yet, but uh, you know we, we, uh, we got those out there. So we're, we're ahead of time. We have to get them ahead of time because uh, for time and travel for them to get here. So you'll notice um, the ordering is coming up here within just, a, within just a week and a half. So for those of you uh, wishing to, to, to do that, um, opportunity, and, and it comes quite fast, so that's the reason why it's in here already. Um, continue to thank everybody for their offerings um, towards the school, and uh, we continue to do that. Lots of items uh, as we get started here this year. Um, our concert's coming up, concert series here a week from now on February 7th. Um, every praise, um, leading with our, our Olive Branch, um, another musical group within our congregation, and so uh, make note of that as well. Um, coming up soon. Men at work have a have a, a meeting coming up here Monday night as well. So anything else to highlight at this time? Um, haven't heard anything yet for Kara Heinrichs. So for those of you who might be wondering, um, of funeral plans and things for that, we haven't had a conversation yet. So just happened a couple days ago. So um, we'll let you know though when uh, when or if there's anything uh, coming in the near future. Other than that. God's blessings as we rejoice in all God has given to us. What a joy it is that we know who He is, because for us, that means salvation. God's peace as we grow in Him. Mm -hmm. 